My name is Mark De Clive Lowe. I'm a I'm a musician, producer, DJ a little bit. Most of my time, I'm either working on music or I'm playing live gigs. London in 19, 1998. Really fell in love with the whole music movement that was happening in West London there. I never expected to live in London or stay in London, and in 10 years, it's been home. I've used the drum machine in the live set for a while, and I used to program the beats, like pre-program them, and I kind of arrange them live, but they'd be programmed already. And then one show, it must have been like 2002 or something, or three around then, a show in Budapest, the audience would not let us off the stage. They wanted more, they insisted on more, and I had nothing prepared in the, in the MPC, in the beats. So I thought, well, I better get on stage and program a beat. And doing that in front of a live audience, it just really, it really reminded me about all the things I loved growing up playing jazz, just that spontaneity and immediacy. So it means now, like every gig, everything's programmed live, that's a big part of the concept. And it means also I can react you know, in the same way if you're DJing and you know, you're, trying to, you're trying a thing but the crowd isn't really feeling it so you can turn, you know, turn left and go a different direction and pull the crowd back in. You know, I can take that to a whole nother level where any way I want to move during a gig, I can do that. You know, it's, I'll, take, I'll take songs we've done and we'll do like a live remix, kind of improvised remix, or it'll be fully freestyle and the whole song's improvised. And Yeah, there's a lot of organic, spontaneous creativity to it. To be honest, building beats live is nothing compared to playing a Beethoven piano sonata. It's like, I can't really do that anymore either. But if <laughs> you get my drift, like, it's not, um, it's not something I've got to think about so much. I just do it. And so it's a very organic process. And it's quite exciting for me too, like, last night we played a festival in Helsinki and the room was, like, we had to warm up the room. It was, we opened the festival basically. Big room, big sound system, big crowd just wanting to go for it. And without even thinking, I just took it really like kind of deep, kind of trancey, afro kind of vibe. And with a bit of jazz soul flavor, but it was a very it was a very deep kind of vibe. And that was what the room felt like it needed. And yeah, the people just loved it. So that was that's still that's just a it's a knee-jerk reaction. It's like it's like when you're driving and you change gears, you're not really thinking, ah, oh, I've got to go into second now, I've got to go into third, I've got to go into reverse, you know, you just, you just do it. Broken beat thing, I think it came out of a, a whole stylistic rebellion where everyone was coming from different styles. You had house producers, dub roots producers, funk musicians, jazz musicians, and everyone just brought different elements together and, and mixed them up. So basically it was a whole lot of misfits who didn't fit in anywhere else who came together as a community. So for me, when I, you know, when I work with a hip hop artist, you know, I, I, I can't and I don't make beats like Pete Rock. You know, if I make hip-hop, it's going to come out sounding how I like it. Same as house music, I work with a house producer or a house singer, and it's going to come out a bit different. And to me, that's the point of difference. That's where it's more unique. So it's not really about as a scene or anything so much as a sound. And I see that sound, you know, developing and growing and kind of infecting different genres and different artists in different parts of the world. I've been lucky to work with a, a, lo a lot of different people around the world. Um, the, the core, some of the core crew in London especially, people like Bembe Segway, which is a, a big, a long time collaborator. Um, Vanessa Freeman, who's singing tonight. Tawia. And the whole, all the producers in the West London scene. And then people in the States like on the more DJ tip, Kenny Dope, Francois K, Joe Cossel, DJ Spinner, Platinum Pipe Pipers, um, 
artists like Omar, Jody Watley, uh, The a couple of days with Lauren Hill, um, Pino Palladino, great bass player from D'Angelo's band. I work a lot with him. I feel I feel very fortunate that I get to work with people who, who I really respect musically and artistically, and we get to make music together. And there's always you know there's always new collaborations happening all the time. There's, People kind of get in touch, or I'll meet them at a gig, and we end up just coming up with something crazy. I was reading actually, it might be even today. That success is the manifestation and realization of a worthy idea. To me, that says it all. That's success to me. And I've always been able to, I've always been able to earn my keep and pay my way with my music. And you know, I'd love to have a, you know, a second. Well, we've got our first house <laughs> in southern France, and you know, I'd love to be able to jump on a private plane to go somewhere. And but those things, you know, those aren't priorities to me. So, from a, a financial perspective, I'm happy with things however they ebb and flow. On a, on an artistic level, I think everyone loves their music to get more out to a bigger audience and to a wider. Um, Wanted to get yeah to be heard in more places. So in that respect, yeah, I definitely I would like to work with artists and produce or write with artists who can take things to that level. I don't I don't I don't see a difference, especially these days, between underground and mainstream. Um, I think it's a public perception and it's a media kind of branding. But there's music that's chart, which is underground. And there's music that no one knows about and which is underground, which sounds like chart music. So there's no difference really, and I think it's it's part of it. It's, if you're a if you're a musician in this day and age, that's part of your responsibility is to be able to bridge the gap and, and do whatever's required. Something that not many people know about me. You know what? The things that people don't know about me, I'm not interested in sharing. Simple as that. <laughs>